Welcome to this third session of Acoustic Webinar Series in 2013. Uh, so as Srinivas uh, already introduced, I'm, uh, my name is Zhi Zhou. I'm uh, both Senior Application Engineer and Product Marketing Manager at uh, FFT. So FFT is a developer of uh, Actron, that is the acoustic solution of uh, MSC software company. So let's get uh, started. Uh, today, um, today we are going to talk about computational error acoustics, or CAA uh, in short. So we will start uh, with a, a short introduction uh, to several different uh, methods uh, in CAA, and then we will position actions method uh, among the several available methods uh, and highlight the, the strengths of the uh, method that action uses. So, uh, particularly, the, the method is called uh, acoustic analogy that is implemented in the finite element uh, environment. We will come back to that uh, in the presentation. And uh, so, I will present the major features for action error acoustic simulation, uh, which is a hybrid method uh, based on acoustic analogies. And we will see the uh, computational process in action and actions interface with uh, numerous CFD solvers. And after that, we will uh, review several case studies uh, of uh, error acoustic simulation uh, from different industries. And this will be followed by a live uh, action demo on the HVAC duct error acoustic noise. I will perform the uh, main steps of that simulation in Action VI, which is the graphical user interface of Action. And then we will have a Q&A session. Okay, now the, when we talk about error acoustics, uh, well, the study of error acoustics is very different from what we have seen in the last acoustic webinars dedicated to some uh, sound uh, radiation from writing, vibrating structure or to vibro acoustics in general. Uh, and the difference between uh, the disciplines of vibro acoustics and uh, aero acoustics arises actually from the very beginning of acoustic source definition. So here I have a definition given by a NASA scientist, uh, Ghosten, uh, who uh, says that the, in the arrow acoustic study, the noise source is generated by aerodynamic forces and motions in a turbulent flow, while in the case of classical acoustics, or uh, also known as vibro acoustics, the noise source comes from the vibration of, uh, of the structure. To give you some examples of uh, arrow acoustic noises, uh, for example, when we have a, a wind that goes around electric cable, it creates turbulence that creates aeroacoustic noise. Uh, same idea when we have a, a landing gear that creates a turbulence, landing gear of an airplane that creates turbulence, we also have aeroacoustic noises. Uh, with fan uh, blades rotating, we have aeroacoustic noises. Uh, with obstacles uh, in pipes uh, or section changes in pipes, we have aero uh, error acoustic noises. And more in general, uh, any turbulence uh, could create error acoustic uh, noises. Now, when we study error acoustics today, uh, we rely increasingly on computational method. So CAA means computational error acoustics. And the CAA method is actually not one single method. We have uh, different uh, strategies available here. Uh, we can also see them as different uh, categories of approaches to solve uh, the CAA uh, problem. One, uh, the first approach is called the direct CFD computation approach. Uh, in this approach, the transient CFD solvers solves not only the flow, uh, but also the acoustic signals uh, in a single CSD run. And then a uh, second approach is the hybrid method. Uh, so the hybrid method, it separates 
the CFD computation in the CFD code, obviously, uh, and the acoustic computation that is done in the second step in the more dedicated acoustic software. And then we also have a third uh, category uh, that is called semi-empirical models uh, that relies only on steady CFD instead of uh, transient unsteady CFD. Uh, so uh, one method uh, relatively well known is the SNGR method. SNGR standing for uh, stochastic noise generation and uh, radiation. Now, when we analyze the strengths and, and uh, limitations of different methods, uh, first let's take a look at the direct CFD uh, solution, which is actually uh, the most accurate method theoretically, uh, because it solves the CFD uh, and the acoustic, the flow and the acoustic in, in a single run. Uh, but also for this reason, it has uh, some major challenges. Uh, for example, the CFD must be compressible in order to propagate acoustic uh, signals on one hand. And on the other hand, uh, as we know, the, for stability uh, considerations of uh, time domain uh, CFD, uh, the CFD schemes are, are usually dissipative. So dissipation mechanism can, could also kill some acoustic uh, signals. So this is a major challenge here. And also with the direct method, uh, it is difficult to set up a, a good non-reflecting condi condition for acoustic waves. Uh, and uh, it's also difficult to introduce any acoustic treatment like, like damping uh, by porous material, for example, uh, or to couple acoustics with vibration structure. Then, uh, comes the semi-empirical method, uh, namely SNGR method. It is very attractive one in the sense that it requires only steady CFD, which is obviously much cheaper than uh, transient unsteady uh, CFD. Uh, but this method is difficult to be accurate. Uh, at FFT, we also did some investigation on, on this method uh, as well, and shows that it, it, uh, it makes some high approximation uh, on the acoustic source uh, so that the, that the result can be hardly uh, accurate. Uh, while the direct method and the SNGR method, they have major challenges uh, either in efficiency or in accuracy. Uh, the hybrid method, it offers a good balance between these two criteria. Uh, that are today highly demanded by industry users. So, as I mentioned, the hybrid method, uh, it will decouple the computation of CFD uh, in a CFD code uh, and the computation of acoustics in an acoustic code. And more, more specifically, in action, we use the acoustic analogy implemented into finite element method, uh, which is, uh, uh, let's say, a sub-method of the hybrid method families. Now let's come back to the action modules uh, that you are familiar with if you follow the previous acoustic webinars. Uh, so all these modules are presented here as, as uh, action uh, modules today, uh, but the development of these modules were done uh, in different at different times. Uh, so back into 1998, Actron it pioneered the F finite element uh, simulation for acoustic uh, simulation. So that was the Actron acoustics module. And around 2004, uh, Actron also pioneered the implementation of acoustic analogy into finite element uh, approach, uh, which is known today as the Actron uh, Aero Acoustics. <coughs> uh, I'd like to, to mention that uh, among all these Actron modules, except this Actron DGM, which is very specific, all the other modules are in the finite element uh, method approach. Uh, so uh, it is uh, possible to communicate 
for example, actron error acoustics with actron vibro acoustics to combine these two worlds and to uh, to make a, 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 a coupled uh, arrow vibro acoustic co simulation. Uh, well, this the next slide presents the uh, analogy acoustic analogy method uh, used in actron arrow acoustics. Uh, we will take the light heel analogy that is first implemented in action and take this aerofoil uh, example for uh, illustration. So here we have an uh, aerofoil regarded as a rigid body and we have a flow that goes through this aerofoil. So in the wake of the aerofoil, we will have turbulence uh, vortices. And in the first step, an external uh, CFD code uh, will calculate in a transient CFD computation the, in, the turbulence in this red region, which is uh, considered as an acoustic force intensive region. And now comes the idea of uh, analogy, acoustic analogy. So the light heel analogy, it will extract acoustic sources from this red CFD domain. Here, when I say acoustic sources, it is the equivalent acoustic sources uh, derived by, by light heel. And to do this, the theory starts from uh, Neville's text Stokes equation, which is the governing equation of, uh, of fluid motion. And uh, through light heel analogy, we do some rearrangement of the Neville Stokes equation. And then we arrive at this equation. And on the left side, we have a, a wave operator. And on the right side, what else remains in the Neville Stokes equations is regarded by light heel analogy as the equivalent source terms in the arrow acoustic problem. Next, uh, when we have the source, uh, action will propagate this source in the red region uh, into from the red region into the into the yellow region. So both the red region and the yellow region they are finite element uh, regions. And when we extract the source, the source is also uh, present in the whole uh, red volume, which is a, a finite element uh, mesh. And then about boundary conditions, uh, we could consider free field boundary condition as the boundary of the yellow region. Uh, in that case, we will apply an infinite element surface here so that we have a non-reflecting uh, acoustic boundary condition. Or we can also combine aero acoustics with any action vibro acoustic features. For example, we can put a cover or put in some pulse material or absorption uh, in the uh, near field of this aerofoil. OK, now let's come back to the general idea of uh, acoustic analogy and to to uh, present uh, to you the two types of acoustic analogies available in action. Uh, the general idea of, actual, of acoustic analogy is that uh, we have on the left side of this uh, equation an acoustic propagation operator, uh, or in other words, a wave operator. And on the right side, we have a source equivalent source terms. The first implementation is light hue analogy. In the light field analogy, the convection effect uh, is represented in the right side. So it is in the uh, source term. Here, convection means acoustic propagation in, in, uh, in presence of a flow. So uh, in fact, theoretically, the light field analogy is not very well adapted or acoustic propagation uh, in, a, in a flow. But uh, our experience shows that uh, with a problem that has a Mach number smaller than 0 0.3, then light heel analogy is still a fine approach. 
But when we have a, a Mach number exceeding uh, 0 0.3 up to uh, 1, uh, then uh, we could use a Morin energy that is also implemented in action uh, to take the convection effect uh, into account with more accuracy. Uh, so in action with both uh, light fuel and Mori analogy, uh, we are able to solve BAA problems in a full subsonic flow range. Now let's, let's take a look at the process uh, of action CAA. We see that the hybrid method it decouples the fluid dynamics computation in the left and the acoustic computation in the right. So starting from a CAD model, we will first build a fluid uh, a CFD uh, model. So we will have a CFD mesh, a CFD computation, and the transient CFD solutions in different time steps. And then uh, we can build an acoustic mesh, which is different from the CFD mesh. It can be the same as the CFD mesh, but usually it is different from it. And then we build the acoustic uh, model, and we use an interface in action called ICFD. Uh, ICFD means interface between action and, uh, and the CFD solvers. We will use ICFD to perform several tasks. First one, uh, it will calculate the equivalent uh, acoustic sources using light hue analogy or Morin analogy. And then it will map the CFD result onto the acoustic mesh uh, for the case where CFD mesh is different from acoustic mesh. And then it will perform a Fourier transform uh, to convert the time domain CFD result into frequency domain acoustic source, or we uh, analyze the acoustic problem in frequency domain. Uh, so ICFD is interfaced with uh, most of the standard CFD solvers that are available uh, today that you can uh, we can find in, in the market. Uh, for example, we support the native uh, result format of uh, star system plus or fluent. Uh, for the others uh, that we don't for uh, support their native format, but we can export uh, the CFD result, for example, from CFX into an intermediate format that is called the inside gold format, uh, and then Actron can read the result from inside gold format. As such, Actron is interfaced with all the uh, these uh, standard CFD solvers. Okay, uh, when we transfer the uh, CFD uh, result into acoustic mesh, uh, I would like to highlight two key features in action that will assure uh, that the CFD result are uh, well transferred into the acoustic mesh. The first is uh, the integration mapping method. As we know that the CFD meshing criteria is usually different from the acoustic meshing criteria. And usually the CFD mesh, CFD cells are much more refined than the acoustic elements. And this integration mapping method, it will locate CFD cells in acoustic elements uh, and use integration method to fully take the, all the CFD information into account. Uh, so all CFD information is conserved in the mapping and no need, there's no need to refine acoustic mesh at source intensive regions. So this is really a, a key feature for mapping CFD result into acoustic mesh. And then another uh, useful tool uh, that allows to tackle 
sometimes the source uh, truncation problem that could happen in uh, aeroacoustic uh, simulation. Now, when we consider uh, a noise uh, generated by vortices in the wake of the cylinder, like here, uh, if the the uh, at the end of the CFE domain, we still have some uh, turbulence information. Uh, and this, when this information is, uh, is transferred into acoustic simulation, uh, sometimes we can have uh, sparrows sources, which is present uh, here. But these uh, sources, they are, they are not real sources, uh, and this is known as the truncation phenomena. Now, in action, we can apply a uh, filter function on the CFD information to damp gradually the CFD result uh, when we approach the CFD boundary. And as such, we can uh, smoothly uh, remove the these sparrows sources. As we can see here, when we apply this filter function, uh, the artificial dipole uh, here uh, it did disappears, and we have a real source uh, very well represented. Okay, so that was the uh, main presentation of actron aeroacoustics, its uh, theory and its um, some practical tools in it. Now we will review some case studies. Uh, the first one is a test case from Daimler. In this case, we are interested in the aeroacoustic uh, noise uh, of a flow uh, passing through a road and aerofoil uh, system. The turbulence will be created mainly in this, uh, in this region where we have a refined CFD mesh. And the observation a point for the uh, the microphone uh, is in, in in far field. In this case, CFD is uh, performed with Star CCM Plus uh, using DES uh, detached uh, eddy simulation. We see that the CFD with uh, mesh is very refined and this is a structured mesh. Then we have unsteady CFD result. Here we just show uh, this result related to one time step of the CFD. And then the acoustic action acoustic module uh, model is uh, il illustrated on this image. Uh, we will consider the rod and aerofoil as rigid body, and the source is captured in this yellow rectangular area. And the whole volume is matched with finite element uh, mesh. Uh, in which acoustic propagates into far field uh, through the infinite element surface. We can see that the acoustic mesh is much more coarse than the CFD mesh, and we capture uh, significant acoustic sources using the light field analogy. And the correlation between measurement and uh, simulation is extremely good. Uh, we see a very nice correlation over a, a very large frequency range up to uh, 7,000 hertz. This is result in a far field microphone. And next, uh, we have uh, air conditioning duct noise. So this is a, a uh, air conditioning duct that is uh, in the in the car, uh, but in this experiment we put it in a semi anechoic room, and we measure the sound pressure level due to the turbulence uh, from this duct at this microphone position. Oops. So the CFD is performed in fluent using LES simulation. And then action performs the acoustic analysis. And again, we have a very good correlation between experiment and uh, simulation. 
So this is a very successful case in air conditioning uh, problem. Uh, today, if we think of, of a car, uh, and we see that there are many uh, uh, methods uh, allowing uh, uh, decreasing the engine noise, uh, for example, uh, with, the, with the introduction of electric cars and uh, hybrid cars, uh, we will have constant uh, decrease of uh, noise from vibration, uh, and in this case, the aeroacoustic noises will become emergent or even predominant. In this case, it's aeroacoustic noise inside the car. And the next case is aeroacoustic noise from outside the car that is transmitted into the car. Uh, so it is a, this case is an automotive side window noise uh, application. It is was performed on a Passat car model. Uh, the description of, of the problem is that the, when the car is running at high speed, the, a turbulence will be created by the side mirror and also by the A pillar of this car. And this turbulence uh, behind the side mirror, it will apply as a load on the side window and the vibration of the side window due to the turbulence will be transmitted into the car compartment. And there are two effects uh, of this loading by the turbulence on the car window. Uh, and we call them TWPF for turbulent wall pressure fluctuation and AWPF for acoustic wall pressure fluctuation. So the turbulent uh, pressure is the force applied directly by the turbulence on the surface of the uh, side window. And the AWPF is the acoustic signal that is originated from the volume in the vicinity of the window that is propagated up to the window uh, and is applied as a force on the on the window. So these two uh, these two contributions uh, they are all uh, present in this problem and they all need to be considered. Now in action we have uh, two different uh, processes to take these two factors into account, and then these two factors will be all applied on the side window, which is modeled uh, using structure elements. Uh, can see that we also have some seal uh, component that is modeled with rubber element. And then this uh, side window is coupled with the interior uh, cavity problem. So here we solve a, a vibroacoustic uh, problem uh, with the aeroacoustic uh, source uh, excitation. Now, when we look at the result of such a simulation, now on this page we have uh, a lot of information, uh, but let's just uh, focus on the comparison between experiment and the sum of TWPF and AWPF uh, on the uh, on, on the uh, driver's ear uh, position when we when we look at the sound pressure level at the driver's ear uh, position. Uh, we see that we have a quite good correlation uh, across a relatively large uh, frequency range. And also, uh, very important information that we can get is that the AWPF contribution, so the acoustic part, uh, is much more important than the turbulent pressure contribution. Our next case is from an aerospace industry. Although it looks like the first case uh, where we dealt with uh, rod and aerofoil, now in this case we, we, we deal with two cylinder, uh, a two cylinder configuration. And uh, the purpose is to build a simplified landing gear of an uh, airplane. Uh, this project was performed in the bank project uh, framework. A bank means uh, benchmark problems for airframe noise uh, computations. So we can see uh, the measurement uh, of 
the term of the arrow cushion noise uh, created by these two cylinders in uh, an anechoic room and the modeling of uh, action on this problem. And again, we obtain a quite good correlation between experiment and simulation. Now, this result is the uh, sound pressure level on the microphone in far field. Next, we are going to look at a relatively different problem, uh, which is the acoustic noise created by the rotation of a propeller uh, that is underwater. So in this case, we will call the problem hydroacoustics, uh, but the principle is the same as the aeroacoustic simulation that we have seen so far. Now, in the CSD code, we will have uh, two different domains. One rotating domain, including the propeller, uh, and a static domain, which is uh, outside the rotating domain. And then in action, uh, we built a mesh that is in this gray, uh, this gray area, which does not include the rotating mesh, because in action we don't have rotating uh, component. But we will take the acoustic contribution from the surface of the rotating CFD domain uh, as an acoustic source, surface acoustic source contribution to action. And then this source is propagated into the acoustic finite element and goes through the acoustic infinite element into far field. I can take a look at the sound pressure level map uh, around this propeller. And then we have uh, the last case, which is a, a fan noise case. Uh, the principle of simulation is similar to the propeller problem in which we have a rotating CFD domain and a static CFD domain. Uh, with the fan noise problem, I would like to mention that we have two different components as the, in the result. The one is the tonal component, which are the peaks we see here. Uh, in the frequency response function. So these peaks correspond to the fan blade passing frequencies. And uh, we also have a, a more broadband contribution, uh, which is uh, relatively less important than the tonal contribution. Okay, so that was uh, just a brief uh, review of these uh, cases. Uh, if you uh, are more interested in the background and the detail of these cases, uh, I put the reference papers here uh, so you can take a look at, uh, at these papers and to learn more how we uh, simulated aeroacoustics in different cases. Okay, with that I will able to conclude today's presentation. Uh, we have seen the concept of uh, computational aeroacoustics uh, and the implementation of acoustic analogy uh, into finite element method. Uh, the goal of this is to study the noise generated by turbulent flows. So Acton relies on a hybrid method to solve the aeroacoustic problem. We need input from an unsteady transient CFD result. The CFD can be compressible, uh, but it could also be incompressible, which is uh, which demands less effort than compressible CFD simulation. And we are based on acoustic analogies, namely light heel analogy and the Mori analogy, to cover uh, acoustic aeroacoustic in the full subsonic flow range. And the quality of the CFD needs to be relatively good only in the volume uh, because we take the 
source in the entire volume uh, and there's no specific requirement on CFD without on CFD boundaries. And uh, the mapping between the CFD and the acoustic mesh is based on the integration technique that ensures all the CFD information is passed through to the acoustic part and uh, uh, we also uh, actually is equipped with the filter function to damp sorrows sources at the boundary of CFD domains. And finally, Actron's arrow acoustic technique is compatible with all the other Actron features, so we could perform without any problem an arrow vibro combined acoustic problems. Okay, so that will bring us to our demo session. In this demo session, I will uh, show the main steps of the mo modeling of the HVAC duct air acoustic noise. First, I will share my desktop. And then go to Acton VI, uh, which is the graphical user interface of Acton. Uh, I will not build this model from scratch. I already prepared it, prepared it, and I just imported it uh, as a already set up analysis in Acton VI. So, for those who have followed our previous workshops uh, or, or webinars, uh, you, you you can identify that. Uh, we have different acoustic domains, for example here, uh, this acoustic 1 and acoustic 3, uh, they are the acoustic 1 is the uh, domain which is in the duct and also in the near uh, vicinity uh, at the outlet of the duct and acoustic 3 is uh, uh, another layer between the near field and the infinite acoustic surface that is the on the boundary of the uh, volume. So acoustic sources, arrow acoustic sources will be captured in the acoustic one domain and propagation will be done both in domain one and domain three. And now reflection uh, condition is set up on the infinite element surface. In the boundary condition node, we see here we have a light hill volume contribution and it points to a field. Now when I open this field, uh, it refers to an action result file. So this result file uh, will be made by the ICFD utility from the CFD result. I will show you the CFD result, just the, the files uh, that are in my uh, on, on the computer. So I have the CFD uh, performed by, by Star System Plus uh, using LES method uh, on different time steps. So we will need information on all these time steps. And for that, we have this ICFD analysis. Sorry. It performs first a source computation and uh, a mapping from CFD to acoustics. So we will identify the CFD code uh, driver, which is in our case is star system plus. We could also uh, specify fluent or, or inside, uh, inside code, which is uh, the intermediate format for, uh, for the CFD code that we don't support directly. And then we will refer to the, all the CFD time steps and then calculate the acoustic source first on the source time domain 
file. So this is the equivalent light heal source in the time domain. And then in the second step here, we will run in ICFD a Fourier transform operation, uh, which will transform the uh, CF, the source in time domain from time domain into frequency domain. And we could also add uh, a window in the uh, in the Fourier transform. For example, we can select hiding any window here. Okay. Now I will visualize the source that is calculated uh, in ICFD. You can see this is the error acoustic source uh, in time domain. Now when I change the time steps, you can see this evolution of error acoustic sources in the duct, but also in the near field outside the duct. And this result will be further on transformed by ICFD into frequency domain as the final acoustic source to the acoustic uh, model. And we are interested here in uh, some pressure level on this point in far field. I've already calculated the result and I just import the frequency response function uh, on that point into PLT viewer uh, which is the uh, 2D plot tool in, in action. And on this point, I will apply dB pressure operator on the fluid pressure, and then I obtain this sound pressure level on that point over this frequency range. Okay, so that was my demo. Okay, uh, so with that, I uh, I thank you for your attention, and we can go to the Q and A session.